Hey guys, it's Annie with Southtown Realty. It is the third Thursday of the month, which means it is time for our third Thursdays where I interview somebody related to home buying, selling, or occupying. So tonight we have on Brent Money, a friend of mine who is in the lending business and in an interesting kind of subsect of the uh, lending business. So we're gonna get him on here to talk about lending. So everyone, this is Brent Money. Uh, who is a lender slash lender broker um, who actually works kind of within my office. And I realized that I don't actually know a lot about it. So tonight you guys will learn as well as I will learn uh, about exactly what it is that you do. It's so <laughs> exciting. Yeah. So before we start with like what you do right now, let's do a little bit of background, introduce yourself, like where are you from? Like what's, what's, what's the story? Also, like why is your last name money? And why does Brant rhyme with Grant? It's crazy. But continue. I know. <laughs> yeah. Brant's a German last name. My parents saw it at a gas station. Oh. And they're like, let's just give him that name. <laughs> so it's a, it's a it. good name. Solid. Yeah. yeah. And then money. I don't know. I guess <laughs> we do have, uh, I don't know if we we're accountants or something for the king, but I know ancestors are buried in oh. Buckingham Palace. Wow. Yeah, we have a cool, cool coat of arms. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are shoemakers and you're just like, money. I'm the money guy. I don't, I don't have an inheritance, uh -huh. so we didn't do too much. Yeah. But we can't, can't have it all, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, grew, I pretty much grew up here. I was born in Texas, but I moved pretty young here to Utah. So I like to think of myself as a Utah. Uh, grew up in Davis yep. County. Went to a, a Davis High. That's Utah. A lot, yeah. A lot of people don't like Davis High, and there's a reason. We're kind of yeah co cocky. I mean, deals. I think that like I grew up in Davis County is pretty much Utah, like AF. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Utah within Utah. Yeah. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I went there, played, you know, was on the high school football and baseball team, and then ironically, I went on an LDS mission to Madagascar, which we kind of talked That's about. Right. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, so anyone out there that needs, you know, a Malagasy translator. Yeah, speaks that this, language. This guy. I mean, yeah. I cannot tell you how many times I have clients asking for that. So I'm like, I need, <laughs> I need to remember that. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, did that. And then, yeah, I got back and decided to get into, uh, figured I'd go get my degree. And what else do you get? I mean, where's the degree that makes the most money is so I was like oh finance I would assume yeah so, so went in and uh got my finance degree and, and ironically I got it right during the crash okay so I'm like oh eight, eight, yeah. oh nine and so there weren't um there weren't really any jobs out there. I heard that about that time yeah <laughs> So, I mean, like some finance companies would offer you like an internship sure. and you're, you're paid right. experience. Right. So I was like, uh, that doesn't really fly for me. And uh, luckily my father is actually a loan right. officer. So, um, he was like, Hey, hey since like stuff's kind of, you know, I went for a, a, a couple, couple of years till stuff picks up. Do you just want to get your license yeah. and do a few loans here and there, you know, make like you know, 30, 40, 50, 50 grand a year, just doing it kind of part-time while you look for other stuff. Sure. So, Did you so, think that your brother or uncle or something was also in lending? Like, isn't it sort of a family business on some level or am I misremembering? No, I do have a brother that's oh. a CFO. Okay. And then another brother that does mergers and acquisitions who, so we, yeah, we are a finance family, I yeah. guess. My mom's a math teacher and my mom's a math oh. teacher. Oh. Okay, so, it's all coming always, together. All always coming grew together. up with numbers, and that's why I love numbers. Is you can't you can't argue them. Well, or you could quote Mean Girls, where they're the same in every language. It's beautiful. Yeah, I just heard, <laughs> I heard that one. Right? Yeah. that's a good one too. Um, Penny, yeah, you just can't. Penny is the yeah, CFO of um, of Salt Town Realty. She's the chief fun officer. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, I believe it. <laughs> anyway, sorry, didn't mean um, to derail. No, yeah, so it is a family thing. So I always grew up with numbers. Um, so my dad's like, yeah, just come do this for a little bit. And I was like, all right. So I finished my degree up. And then, again, the job market wasn't very big, but the, the company I hung my license up with were, was opening a new call center okay. for mortgage 
religious. And so they're like, and I applied and I, my dad said he didn't do, he didn't give me, he didn't make any phone calls or anything. Cause he knew the president. Mm -hmm. He says he didn't do anything, but I believe he did. Mm -hmm. Cause my resume was not like the rest of the LOs had like 10 years experience. And here I come in, I haven't like done maybe two loans my whole Just life. Some good old fashioned nepotism. Love yeah. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure he made a few phone calls and like, yeah, you gotta hire my son. Cause he, he was a decent producer. Um, so I got into that role and really just sharpened my knife for about five years, just talking to people from all over uh, pretty much the states. I had licenses in multiple states. So kind of learned the lingo and got to know the finer workings of mortgages and just talking to, I mean, you're talking to, I mean, same thing you deal with, how many personalities that we deal with a day. All of them. It's like, you can't, yeah, you can't talk to someone this way. They're going to be like, oh, I don't like, or you have to talk in a certain way. So it's like learning those subtle nuances of how to just to communicate with people yep. and read them. And a lot of it was just over the phone. So I didn't really have a lot of that input yeah. that you usually get face to face. So I, I did that and ironically, somehow um, I got up to like a branch manager role within that call center. And I did that yeah, for like six years. And then I bought my own house. Okay. And a, uh, an, an LO, a normal LO, what, what you're used to, like we call retail. Yeah. Did my mortgage and I was talking to him. He's a cool guy. I was like, so how much volume do you do? And he's like, I do about one to two million a month, which is what we were doing. Yeah. And I was like, well, how much do you make? And he's like, oh, that's going to be about 25, 30 grand a month. <laughs> yeah. And I was making like seven. Right or six yeah. and I was like uh I'm in wrong the wrong business I'm, I'm in the wrong channel yeah so so that's when I made the jump over to retail what we call it or um you kind of generate your own business kind of how you are as a real estate agent you don't rely on anyone else to get you your deals what you do in a call center they just feed you yeah. you know 10 15 leads a day this time you had to go out and get your own stuff so then you had to start marketing with real estate agents and and that was a big learning curve, to be honest. Yeah. That was probably a bigger learning curve than more, the mortgages because it's just a whole, whole different beast. And I think people don't get that with, uh, you know, like as a lender, you work under, you know, whatever company you work under. And as a realtor, you work under a broker. Yeah. And I think that people think that like through those companies that you're just given work and you're like, no, 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 no. I have to pay this guy to work for him and i have to come up with my own work and if i don't come up with enough work that guy probably won't like me very much you're like no we're yeah. independent contractors like and i always say that like you can get a loan through a bank or a credit union and that's fine but that guy gets paid a salary yeah. so that guy isn't necessarily particularly motivated to like help you do it quickly and efficiently whereas like a private mortgage lender like they only get paid when you close on a house so like the hustle is just different the same with a realtor like i don't get a salary you don't get a salary i mean you might because yeah. lenders do sometimes get like a little bit of a salary and their yeah, bonuses yeah, we get paid, for closing but yeah you know, we get paid it's, by law we get minimum right. wage yeah <laughs> so you, you're basically law. like a bartender but you then you yeah. can like sell things on the side that are more expensive than drinks <laughs> so yeah yeah no yeah to that it's your point it's because I, I was even looking at some KW reviews and they're like, don't ever use KW, this agent. I'm like, oh no, it's actually totally yeah. different. You know, yeah. or I've had, a, I've had a client who closed with, I was Citywide at the time and they closed another loan with Citywide and I called them up. I'm like, hey, what's going on? They're like, oh, I, don't worry. Like I close, still close with you. I got close with your company. And that, uh, and that ball, that, that fell on me being like, oh no. Uh, actually, like I didn't explain actually, this. Yeah, it's like, like there's so, someone that used you in the past and used KW Salt Lake. Like I used the same company to be loyal. You're like, that's not how it works. Different. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I, I, I'm, I'm happy. Actually, in eight years, I've never had that happen. I did have somebody recently who was like, hey, um, our friend told us about you, but we also interviewed with somebody in your office. Is it too awkward or can we meet with you? And I was like, meet with me <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I don't yeah. know who you met with and like that's fine and, and maybe you like them better and you can do that too it's like you're literally just shopping for people and KW doesn't really have I shouldn't say this 
but you know, it doesn't have a ton to do with it. Like we're taught the same basic principles, but right. all the agents are totally different. Like totally yeah. different. Totally different. Yeah. Totally uh, different ways you do stuff. Yeah. So. Like educated similarly, but the end result is just individuality. Be completely different. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's how it is with lending too. Like pretty much almost all the lenders you talk to, we can all do the same thing pretty much. It's just like, who are you going to get along with yeah. and who, who style so do you like more? This is a good segue though, because you're not like a normal lender. You're like a broker lender. So explain to me kind of how that works. Yeah. So traditionally in, in mortgages, you have two different types. You got your broker, which don't be confused with realty bro brokering. It's completely different. You have your broker channel, then you have retail. So you didn't hear retail a lot. Sorry, my um, um, my thing is failing. It's like falling. So I'm just going to deal with this. Continue talking. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so with retail, it's going to be like your big companies like Security National, Guaranteed Rate. They're going to have all their branches everywhere. Um, they have their own infrastructure. So like their own, they pay their own underwriters. You know, you have area managers, you have VPs, um, you have one system you're working out of. So we call it a cradle. Yeah, yeah. it's the cradle to grave is what we call it. So like you start to finish okay. um, with that company and, and, and you're stuck with that underwriter and you're stuck with uh, whatever that product is, or you can switch products, but you're still stuck in that kind of channel. Yeah. Um, which has its benefits, um, but then you have brokering where I'm just, you can look at me just as like a, a an intermediary, I guess mm -hmm. is the word, where I can, and you come to me, you uh, you give me all your information, um, I get all your, your documents, I pull your credit, I look at it, and I go, okay, let me go out and, and look at a few different whole we call them wholesale lenders so mm -hmm. they're lenders who don't have branches out there they they, oh. they freely focus on funding loans oh. they're they're not there for originating so they rely on people like huh. me that bring them the okay. business so i have about 10 in my portfolio so let's say you have a really unique you're self-employed so they're kind of like off-brand lenders they're kind of like they're they're not like the suave or the you know like the Ford. They're like they're like kind of off-brand lenders that you're dealing with. Is that yeah, right? it's ones you never really, really never heard. Right. Of. Okay. So uh, you might have heard of Rocket. Yeah, Rocket. Mortgage. Yeah, for sure. Mortgage. So they're they're one of them. They have branches too. So right. I usually don't use them because I'm competing against yeah. them as well. But like United Wholesale Mortgage, okay. you probably haven't heard of them. Okay. They're probably the biggest one. Yeah. In in the U.S. Yes, um, this is like loan stream, some stuff you've, some lenders you never heard of, okay. but they offer great rates and usually they'll get certain deals through that they normally want to have Interesting. through a retail l l lender. So you come to me, I package up the deal and then I shop around and I go, Hey, I'll, I'll go to a lender and be like, Hey, can you do this deal? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, cool. Can you do this deal? And they're like, yes. I'm like, okay, let's go with you. Let's see what your rates are. Yeah. Um, and then I present you like, okay, here are our options. This lender said, no, the interest rate on on um, this one that said yes is this. This is their term time. Sometimes the better rate's not always the better rate, as as, as you learn. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it, it, this is a great rate, but it's going to take them forty five days. To sure. Do. So it's like, like that's kind of, yeah. So it's like, so I go around and, and we shop for the best, and especially with clients, you learn like, okay, what's their pain point? Is it the cash to close? Mm -hmm. Is it the interest yeah. rate? Is it getting the right product? So like, I kind of have a more diverse portfolio okay. to look at and, and say, okay, so where we're gonna go. And then I kind of am your lawyer going to the judge. Okay. Is how I kind of describe it. So I'm with you 24, I'm, I'm with you the full time, but we are battling up against someone else, yeah. right? So well, that's a broker. I'm Maybe sorry, right there. My, my, my thing is broken. Um, oh, no. Sorry, this is a first. So um, just keep talking. I'm just going to be wiggling around over here. You're fine. <laughs> and so retail has its perks too because it's a full, you have one channel. So you take out your application and you just move on from there. Um, and then usually you can have some discussion. Uh, the LO has a little more pull with the underwriters because like they know them personally. Right. And but so it's not like, hey, can like 2008 pull, where they were you know, like slipping them money, you know, it's not like that, but yeah, a little uh, bit. Yeah. No, but I, I will buy them whiskey or some okay. wine. 
<laughs> back, back in the day. Just so be like, hey, can you put my file to the top yeah, of the for, list today? For sure. You know, it, it, it's a little more, it's not as bureaucratic as the wholesale lender. Uh -huh. You're like, no, that's your queue, that's your turn times, this is what it is. You're like, okay. Um, so retail does have their, their, their benefits. The problem usually with retail is, is every, you have a hierarchy. So you have your LO, then you have your branch manager, Remember, no you your area acronyms. manager. No acronyms. Oh, yeah. Loan officer. <laughs> okay. Your loan officer, your branch manager, your area manager, then like your VP, and then like your president. And everyone wants a piece yeah. of the pie. And so that's why traditionally you're in, in retail with those big retail companies, Security National Guaranteed Rate. And I'm not hating on them. Sure. I actually have a bunch of friends. Yeah. Um, that still work with them. Someone's uh, everyone's taking a small piece of the pie. They're all, they're all, pie all commenting is, right now and just spewing hate yeah, on the feed. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're all taking a piece of the pie, and a piece of that pie is part of the interest rate. Okay. So that's why these big companies will have usually uh, higher interest rates. I see. Because you're 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 paying more and more someone that wants a little more piece of the pie. Yeah. So when. I kind of tell people, and it might be in real estate as well, like if you walk into a lender's branch and they have these luxurious big windows mm -hmm. and desks, mm -hmm. it's like, who's paying yep. for that? Yeah. So it's built into that rate. Yep. And we'll talk more about that. But a broker, I mean, I have my little office there in KW. Mm -hmm. uh, that's about it. Yeah. Like I don't have a lot of overhead. He doesn't even have a a picture on the wall you guys he is, he is so cheap picture. there's not even a picture on the wall <laughs> i know i know i gotta work i thought about that the other day i'm like i should probably make something <laughs> like a little little flavor <laughs> <laughs> and um, so what is the so do you think that through like so you're a buyer on the market you're looking for the best rate for the fewest closing costs um and you've got your bank, your credit union, your private mortgage lender, and then you've got your broker, which is like another subset. Um, is it your belief that you can find people the best rates <laughs> between all those? Yes. And let me make a caveat that I understand what you said. I actually really like what you said earlier. Um, the same way that when you put in an offer on a house, the price is not the only term. It's like you could have a, price it was a hundred thousand dollars better than the next guy but if the sellers need time to move or they need whatever it is they need that might not be the best offer so it's not just the price so i get that um that it's price and terms but like do you legitimately feel like you're able to offer people because in my mind you're adding another person the same way that you were saying that like those big you know things that you're adding another person to it so you have to get paid also so you're getting paid and then the lender's getting paid plus the appraisal and title fees and that, 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 But like, do you think that you're able to find people the best um, rates through that truly? Uh, usually, yes. Um, the thing about these wholesale broker lenders that we use, they do so much volume and they're just like, they do it like just, what's the word, so efficiently mm -hmm. that they just, they're like, we're not gonna take a lot. Um, from the, the interest right. rate that's really how, how lenders get paid it's through the interest rate yeah so like we're really going to add too much to the interest rate because we're banging out i mean a billion dollars mm -hmm. a month so it's like we'll just take a small piece of everything and yeah. then um you'll get your so usually but what i do like about brokers is they become more efficient because they used to be the whole thing is oh don't go with a broker it's going to take you 60 days oh interesting like but so now like a broker, I can usually get stuff done in 10 to 15 days mm. if it's a clean file sure. and we don't have appraisal I issues and a real retail lender can do that. But the problem is a lot of these LOs, we're all going out to the broker world, offering these great rates, still get, getting paid mm. the same. Mm. Um, so you're starting to see a lot of these retail guys, the big players, you start to see them start to get skinny now too. Okay. So we're kind of helping correct the market instead of inflating you know rates. because they have to compete Usually. yeah exactly so you're starting to see you're starting to see a correction now where i mean and, and i'm pretty transparent i'm a numbers guy you can't argue not not numbers so if like someone comes back like you first was offering something nuts like a year ago mm -hmm. it was like 5.7 percent. i actually remember that point. yeah 
It was nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, go walk with them. Right now. <laughs> like, there, there's nothing, like, I can't even come close yeah. to that. And you can't argue numbers. Yeah. So it's just like, that's what it is. So you're starting to see some retail people start getting really creative. Yeah. On, on uh, getting skinny. And they have to. But for, for the longest time, the refi boom and stuff, like two or three years ago, you'd see stuff and be like, dude, you're like making four or five percent on the back end yeah. on this. I think that's the biggest thing for me, like as an agent, as I'm, you know, I obviously have, um, uh, I think if people, there's nobody who's been like watching these interviews from the beginning, but I have a lender that is like my, my like yeah, guild yeah guild yeah. like donna patterson at guild yeah, Don, i've Don, interviewed her on, donna, yeah yeah i've interviewed her on the show before she is like my bread and butter because she has beat everybody on rates like she's up against mountain america you know oh i did this and it gave a little thumbs oh, that up. is cool That's funny i thought donna's no, she's, one. yeah it's like yeah um <laughs> so uh you know but ultimately efficiency is where it's at for me it's like you can have the best rates or the lowest closing costs or the whatever you can be really friendly you can be this and that but i'm like on any given deal i might want 40 days to close very rare or i might want 12 days to close or 10 like can you do it in that time and efficiency is a huge part of the equation for me and so um yeah like what you're saying uh that people just have to be competitive with each other you know which is why most people don't go with banks right they're not they're yeah, not fast they're or not efficient gonna... they might be a little bit cheap but they're not fast or efficient and as the market uh continues on the way it is with interest rates where they're at like you have to be competitive with the numbers not just you know it has to be everything it yeah. has to be the whole package it has to be yeah like you you gotta learn uh, so like that's sometimes to, to your point you know some lender or someone's offering you like the incredible deal it's like yeah but your contract's only for 20 right. days it's like what do we call Call it a, a, fugazi, a fugazi or whatever. Like a that's fugazi, a fugazi. It's a wazi. Yeah. It's a woozy. Yeah, it doesn't it's exist. Wall Street, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for Thanks for hearing that. Um, and that's where I got it from. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's it's like okay, that that's a great deal if it occurs, but it's it's not going. To. Yeah. So to your point of, of efficiency, and like if you do a a real quick uh, you know, finance and appraisal de deadline. It's like, how fast can you get into underwriting? How fast can you get that appraisal back? And yeah. sometimes, you know, if, if you go somebody you don't know or trust. So a, you know, you're kind of up in a the quick air. cue, and then I'm gonna switch kind of uh, trajectories here. Um, you had mentioned early on, like if you're working with a lender that's like, um, you know, one of the big name lenders and they've got like the brands and the nice office and all this stuff and it's expensive, da, da, da. Like if you're working with one of those, they're pretty much locked in. So just for the viewers, so they, they know after 2008, you can't really be locked in with a particular appraisal because during those times, people were like gifting and sleeping with each other and God knows what, so that the lender and the appraiser were in the same bed yeah. or whatever. These days, my understanding, and you can correct me, is that any given like lender, has to work with an appraisal company and they uh, request the appraisal from the company and then that company randomly chooses an appraiser so that there can't be any sort of like um collusion collusion yeah. some uh, tally ho with the you know with the lender and the appraiser so when you are doing these deals with these like off-brand lenders um, and figuring out what the best bet is for people. How does the appraisal work? And are they still, they're still going to that appraisal company and choosing at random? Or are you somehow choosing the lender or the appraiser? Or how's, how does that work? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Mm -hmm. So we still have to, we call them, I know you don't like acronyms, it's AMC. So appraisal management company. Okay. We still, I have like two or three in my portfolio. Okay. Where, I'll call them up and be like, hey, how fast can you get someone out to X, sure. Y, and Z? Um, some lenders, some wholesale lenders I use, I can just use their department okay. and they just deal okay. with it. But yeah, I can't have any communication. I can't know who the appraiser right. is. I can't talk to them about value or I can really use my license. However, I always put the contact for the entry contact of the house as my real estate agent. Oh, smart. Yeah. The real estate you guys can say whatever you want. Oh, dude, I I I meet appraisers for sure. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm like show up with cookies. And yeah. X, Y, and Z. Yeah. 
talk to them, love, especially if you're pushing appraisals, sh- I'll show them because I can't have any word for it. But yeah. that's why I always I have see. my agents. I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah, butter them. Oh, up. no, I because first you guys can talk all you want. Yeah, I mean, I'm not doing anything. I'm, I've never brought cookies, but I bring the comps, you know, I just bring the comps that I use. And I'm like, hey, this, this place, especially yeah. during the COVID years, like this place had 10 offers on it. Um, and my clients really love it. And here's the reason why here are the comps that I use to justify the price. Like, because I've never written an offer where I like legitimately can't justify the price on some level, you know, unless it's like maybe a cash offer, even not with cash offers. Cause even my cash people, I don't want them to get like a bum deal. Like they're paying $200,000 over what the house is actually yeah. worth. So it's easy for me to bring comps and be like, Hey, this is how I justified so, it to my clients. You're welcome to use these comps. Um, so what's a comp? Oh no, you caught me. A comp is a comparable property to the one that is like under scrutiny. So the house that you have under contract, we look at other houses that are in the same area that are similar style, square footage, bed, bath, count, garage, whatever, to see like, well, that guy's house sold and it's really similar to yours and it sold for, you know, X amount. And so your house therefore should also sell for that amount. Good catch. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah to, to answer your question though is it, it just depends on the deal yeah. so i do have ambiguity as far as like okay do i want to use there, there's some good local people that i can use or like i said i can just go with the lender i choose and they'll pick the per like they'll do it um so that's one thing i do like about the broke world is i do have more tools at me if you go for the retail the big stop shop like you have to use their amc their appraisal management company and whatever they tell you the turn time is that's what their turn time is when okay. I, I can go, go out and compete get uh, appraisals to get in in past yeah sorry no, no, no that's good i we're running a little long so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do like a quick recap of like my understanding of our conversation and then I want to do like the obvious question that I sent you in all caps is like, what about interest rates? What's happening? What do you know? Yeah. And then we'll, we'll end it because I don't like them to go too long. So, um, so what I have learned today um, is that you can get a loan through anybody that you want if you're buying a home. You can get it through a bank, a credit union, a private mortgage lender that is probably like a name brand that you've heard mm-hmm. of, like Neo Home Loans or Guild Mortgage or like these mm-hmm. one. What are the other big ones that I'm missing? Security, Security National, National, Guaranteed National. Rate. Or, you know, you like these private mortgage lenders or what Brandt is offering is a brokered option. So he has about 10 different types of kind of off-brand people that can loan you money that he can shop on your behalf to find you the best like options and rates. And then even within that, he has more options for getting like appraisals quicker and things like that. Like it's a bit more of a fluid thing. Um, But I would say, and you can correct me on this, if you work with Brent, you're also then working with a lender that you don't necessarily know that well. Like you don't have a relationship with them. Like your relationship will be with you, right? Mm -hmm. So they have to like you. Yeah, uh, that wouldn't be hard. But like, you know, they're, you're working with Brand, but he's kind of working with somebody else. So to me, it's a little bit like a little bit hands off of like who you're working with. Whereas if you worked with a private mortgage lender, and I'm not saying anything is good or bad. If you worked with a private mortgage lender, you're working with like the person and company directly. And you may or may not have better rates and options than working with you. Is that an okay? Okay, yeah. analysis. Yeah, that, that's pretty okay. Yeah, that's a good analysis. I'm trying to be um, like, um, you know, just um, non opinionated in it, just like these yeah. are the options. And to your point, like, you would have to. So, when we take out the mortgage a- application and do more stuff, like, we have to go through my systems. Mm-hmm. But then we set, we find another lender, you have to go through their system. So, now the client's okay. working for two different systems, right. and it gets a little convoluted yeah. when we go with the, le- like, the big name brands, you're just yeah. start to finish, you're using that one system yeah. and the your first mortgage payment or second mortgage, you're gonna to go to them. Yeah. Um, you're gonna know the branch manager. Everybody's gonna sell you yeah. off, but eventually, yeah. but yeah. Um, no, that's a really great um, point on that. So let's go, let's just kind of transfer into like the future. Like what's the news in the lending world? What's the hot stuff going on? What's going on with the interest rates? What's like the behind the scenes action? Yeah, it's been kind of, we don't uh, not rates should have been lower <laughs> by now, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> you know the inflation 
reports came out. Now, I will say this, historically, through every election, somehow, magically, rates start to go down September, October, it's November. It's not magic. They just want the winner to look like the hero. It's rigged. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, they can't, they're, I mean, they are high, right? Actually, today we took a good, uh, we, we got some good improvements. Oh. Um, but Grant, I, sorry, I forgot to mention this. We don't say hi, because what are historic averages? Low, what are historic averages? Right. So historically yeah. low is what we say. It's My normal. apologies. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> but they can't. I mean, if, if you look at I mean, mortgage applications are down, and why I think they kind of are is because people who could afford were the interest rates that have already bought. Yeah. Um, so now they're staying high, like people just can't, I mean, the American person, I average, I mean, they're working their, their own balls off and they're like, I mean, at the, the interest rates, this is like, you can't qualify for much. Yeah. And so for every one buyer out there, there's 10 waiting on the sideline for a 1% reduction. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to keep our housing market going, which kind of uh, fuels the whole economy, yeah. uh, believe it or not. You can't keep rates at where they're at right now just because no one can buy. Well, so, not nobody because I have a lot of transactions right, right now. People are buying right now. Well, because you're a good agent. And we have great products, which is what I was hoping we would get into, is wow. like you can do rate buy downs and things like that mm -hmm. to like reduce people's, you know, strain on their monthly payments. Um, and I know that there's like a new thing now too with a, if you buy like a new house, there's a grant program. There's like all kinds of stuff. There's grant programs. There's, you know, first time home buyer stuff. There's, if you buy a new house, what's the one I'm thinking of? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, that's the 25 grand one for Utah housing. Yeah. My people don't usually buy new houses, but you know, they could, and then there'd be that grant for it. So there are a yeah. lot of programs to make it more affordable for people since, interest rates are at um, historic lows compared to the averages. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, to, to your point real quick, lenders, we want, they want to make money. And so they're getting really creative yes. on how to, how, how to get those deals through to make, Correct. like you said, I probably 60, 70% of the deals I do have those temporary buy, buy downs we get the sellers I to very, pay for. I very rarely do, do a temporary, a I very rarely do temporary buy downs. I actually hate temporary buy downs personally. But that's that's truly like just a personal opinion. Um, yeah. I do life alone buy downs almost exclusively. Yeah, yeah. So well, I'm seeing a lot of those. We there is we can get people in the house, and we've talked about this before. It's, guys, houses are going to keep on appreciating. Let's get you in. And yeah, yeah. The mortgage payment might, might can can you hold on for six months yeah. to a year? Because that same house you're going to buy is going to be now. Well, 40, 50 grand more in a year. You marry the mortgage and you date the rate. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's that's so like, true. Hey, and, and lenders are kind of like, they're figuring that yeah. out. They're like, hey, let's get people in the house, get let them start gaining appreciation. And then once rates, you know, fall back, then let's just snag up, up a, a, a refi. Yeah. And, and refi you can do for yeah. pretty cheap. So, yeah. And, and they're not as stressful as a purchase mortgage. So, yeah. Um, all right. I feel like we should wrap it up. I feel like we could talk for another hour about, <laughs> about lending. I didn't stuff. realize it's like 6.34 I know. already. I'm like, no, oh, I try gosh. to keep it kind of short, but it's like there's lending. I feel like is one of the more, um, uh, this will be my last little, but what I say is that choose your lender wisely because lenders can screw up, like it didn't have thumbs up. <laughs> that lenders can screw up a real estate transaction far quicker than anyone else involved in it like way oh, yeah. quicker than i can a lender can really screw up a transaction so choose your lender wisely make sure you trust and understand them make sure that you're honest with them and you've given them all of the information that they have asked for um, and continue to ask for it's a bit of a financial colonoscopy buying a house sometimes <laughs> um, but... i've heard the colonoscopy i guess say you have financially have to strip like it's a yeah. very financial bull somebody thing. i I had a client who did a jumbo loan and they they called it a financial colonoscopy and I was like, I am taking that forever in my business. That's a good one. Yeah. See, so, I, I usually ask for kid, uh, people's like firstborns exactly. or DNA samples. Exactly. Yeah. As a joke. Yeah. 
<laughs> we do. And, and to your point, yeah, just think of us as your lawyer. Yeah. Like, tell us everything, yeah. and we're going to know what to show yeah. the underwriter. Like, trust us. But that's the worst feeling as a lender. You're sitting there, and the underwriter's like, hey, they have this property in Nephi yeah. that they didn't disclose on. And so you call the client, oh, what's this property? They're like, oh, I didn't think you need to know. It's like, oh. I interviewed I, I interviewed an underwriter on here. I, I met a friendly one and I was like, you know that everybody's terrified. I was like, you know that yeah. everybody's terrified of you, right? <laughs> She's like, mm, yeah, but they shouldn't be. It's not that bad, da, da, da. And I was like, we're all afraid. Um, so, all right, well, Brent, I really appreciate you coming on my little show here. And um, we didn't, sometimes we get like live questions. We didn't get any, but if any come up in the meantime, I'll reach out to you and you guys can yeah. follow Brent. He's got a, you know, his uh, work Instagram there if you want to learn about lending and all things and reach out to him if you're looking to buy home. So that'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me on. This is my first Instagram live. Yeah. I'm real, actually really <laughs> nervous about it. And like you, you said, I, like I've gone up in front of class and stuff yeah. with 30, 40 agents and be just fine. This one, I'm like, oh, I'm a great real. Like, no, because it lives, yeah. it lives permanently on the internet. Yeah. All right. Okay. See ya. Thanks, bud. See ya. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye.